Okay, guys. Um, so this can feel a little bit overwhelming. Um, all of the things that we need to, you know, requirements and set up and recording and reporting and my gosh, uh, talk to me a little bit about a little more about why um, I would want to go through all that and really what the value and benefit is to my business of taking this on. All right, let me answer that because my firsthand experience getting into this was absolutely overwhelming. I was on my own. I looked up government contracting on the internet, found a website, found another website, and it went on and on. And then I was mm -hmm. looking at, you know, somebody said, oh, you got to look at RFPs. So I suddenly looked at RFPs and thought, I can do this. And I couldn't. I didn't know where to begin. Uh, and that's how I met um, Sheila. She was my counselor at the time. Mm -hmm. Sheila uh, Harris Adams, director over at uh, the MJ SBDC at NJCU. Um, and she really was able to really guide me. So the guidance um, to get started, everything that was overwhelming just became this really clean, linear, and easy path to follow, right? And that's what made, that's what, that, that's what took this overwhelming conversation of this paperwork and that paperwork and this certification and turned it into this very simple path, you know, and it was the checklist. It became that checklist, a business plan, a marketing plan. Uh, a resume, um, you know, you're you're new to government contracting, so you're all private sector work. You have to put that into a portfolio in some way, and then every time you're responding to a bid as you go on, you're readjusting those those words to fit that bid. How to read a proposal? So it just became these steps because once we had the guidance, once I had that guidance, this big monstrosity became this amazingly easy path to follow. It was that simple. It, it, it's it's it sounds like a lot, but when it's it's literally your grocery list. You go in the grocery store, and you know. And by this time, you're familiar with the grocery store you're going to, so as you know every aisle. You could literally create your list based on the aisle, and go shopping and be in and out in 30 minutes and get what you need. Um, and that's what this is. And after that, it it's also it helps your business grow just from responding to RFPs. Because as you're responding to an RFP, you're teaching yourself how to respond in this way. There's no audience there, right? There's no audience. There's just you, your team, and that RFP. And you're pushing it around and you're working together to, to craft a document that is going to put you at least in the front of your competitors, right? But that's also teaching you for your private sector. Right. Because now you're you're honing your skills and you when you have to go out on a sales call or you have to do marketing inside your company to gain business. Now you're starting to to be able to take that same methodology and apply it to your your commercial side, which is improving your commercial side, which is huge. And then on top of that, the work. Right. You're you're again, you're reliving your work a lot more in these RFPs. I honestly I forget my portfolio for my my commercial side often. But because I'm working on an RFP, I'm constantly digging in the crates, as they say, and I'm pulling out this project and I'm rereading this project. I'm like, oh, my God, I totally forgot I can do that. You know what I mean? And that's something I could bring it back to my commercial side. So from a from a business development side, um, the path to, is, is you get connected with someone that can guide you. Absolutely. Especially when there's so many no cost options to do that. Right. And that's what you really want is the no cost options because they're not in it to make a buck, right? Um, and you'll be happy when you're not winning 25 bids that you can't keep up with and you're only winning three bids and you're doing the best job you can do and you're getting your praises and your thank yous and the work is being put out there and seen. I mean, so it's rewarding. It's um, character building. It's profit margin building. Um and it's not that overwhelming. It really isn't. You just can't go it alone. That's that's the big takeaway from getting started in this. Seek out the help. That is. Gotcha. Um, Bob, I'm good. gonna I'm gonna throw that same question to you. Um, talk to me a bit more about like really the you know the value and benefits, success stories, especially as a counselor, ways that you've seen procurement really support businesses and grow businesses and, and, you know, why it's such an important issue for people or such an important thing for people to consider taking on for their business. And, you know, I was recently interviewed by a Philadelphia newspaper and one of the questions he asked was, 
well, you know, he hears how hard it is to do business in New Jersey. You know, is it that hard to do business in New Jersey? My answer was no, it's not. I said, but what what's hard is you need to understand what resources are available for you out there. Uh, you know, as the New Jersey Small Business Development Centers, uh, one of the things we kind of look at ourselves as a hub. So when someone comes to us for counseling, well, we know that we can reach out to PTAC. We know that we, we can reach out to New Jersey Business Action Center. We can reach out to New Jersey Economic Development. We have lenders that we can reach out to. You know, and we have probably 75 consultants with different areas of expertise, you know, including government procurement, that we can reach out to. So is it hard to do business in New Jersey? No. It's just that you need to know where where to look, you know, look for your help. Now, a lot of it is, especially with government procurement, it is hand-holding. It is helping them through that in, initial process, just like Eric said. And, and you are going to have losses and you are going to have wins because you are you are learning. Um, you know, I remember uh, bidding on a on a uh, project to do a documentary on a bridge that was being built in North Jersey. And, you know, I was working with the the uh, project manager. You know, we I gave we gave the bid. And he called me in to review the bid, and he said, this is too high. I said, why do you think it's too high? He goes, well, when you come out and do that, and this is where understanding your business is important. And as Eric said, you, you got to understand, you know, you know how you operate, right, and make sure you get to those efficiencies that you need to get to. And he said, how, you know, and he said, you know, well, when you come out to film this, you can film this over here at the same time. I said, well, but our experience shows that you schedule to do this over here, but then you don't. And then you may do that over there and you may not. And of course, it may rain also. And I still had to send people out to do the work. And well, it came down to the point where I said, I don't tell you how to build a bridge. <laughs> Please don't tell me how to do a documentary. Uh so you need to have confidence in what you do because there are going to be those those times you do need to build relationships with the the um, with the procurement uh, on the, the government procurement specialist, um, you know, and put yourself in their shoes too. That you know, if you do a good job for them, they're going to look good. If you don't go do a good job, they're not going to look good, and they're probably not going to want to use you again. And that gets into where you why you don't always need to be the lowest price is because, you know, you have a much better chance of getting that next job. If you, sh if, if you make someone look good, because that's, that's what it's going to, no one's going to ask that, that person, if, you know, if, did you get the best price, but they will ask them, why didn't the job get done properly? 